Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radacat. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a calendar visual in Power BI using built-in visuals um, and have a calendar like this or with some formatting and conditional coloring like this. Let's see how it works. Uh, to use the calendar visual here, I actually used a matrix visual. Now, there are some custom visuals that can build calendar for you, uh, and they are good, of course, but uh, custom visuals comes with some limitations, and you may not be in favor of using a custom visual. So I'm going to show you how you can actually build your own version of calendar uh, visual using the built-in visuals in Power BI. The first step is that you need to have a date table. A date table is a table that has one row per day. Uh, each column is an attribute of a day. Um, and the reason that you cannot use the built-in date table is that because we are going to use these uh, day names, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, as the headers of the metrics visual. And the default cal calendar table in Power BI doesn't have that. And of course, you need also the day of week so that you can sort this one based on the other one. Uh, you need month name and you need month number, of course, and uh, the year. So these are some columns that you need. Now, uh, one easy way to do that is to go to the link down in the description below that goes to my blog article, uh, which has um, which has a full script, Power Query script for building a date table. And there are scripts for building that table using uh, DAX script in my blog as well. So what you do, you do is you just download that script and uh, copy and paste it in a, um, in a get data from blank query. And then you'll have a date table, which is customizable. You can say, what is your start of, uh, what is your start of uh, week and this is uh, this is that script actually so you can download this whole script from uh, from my link down below uh, what is from date what is to date what's first uh, first of first day of week and things like that so after you set that up or build your own let's say version of date table then you need to do some uh, custom sorting because a text field doesn't matter if it is a day name or month name has to be sorted properly, otherwise, um, in this case, uh, otherwise it would be sorted alphabetically. So you want to sort this by that. Uh, and to do that, you select this column, they name, and under column tools, you go to sort by column, and then you can choose day of week. So this is sorted by that. And also for month name, you need to sort that by the month number. In this case, I have a column called month. So you need to make sure that your text columns or label columns are sorted by the number columns. After you do this, um, then you are ready to build your visualization. I'm going to start from scratch. So you can first add a matrix visual. Matrix visual is this one. Uh, the reason for matrix visual is that you can have column headers as well as row headers. Uh, so I'm going to use that and my column headers, I can use the day name. If I can find the day name here. Yep, day name as the column headers. So that will bring uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, th Thursday, those here. And if you want to change the start day of the week, as I said, go and change it in that script for date dimension then I can use start of week, that is also another column you need, as the row header. So that this shows which week I'm looking at. Here you can see the week, start of the week and the row headers. Um, so that basically is the custom, uh, is, is the calendar table. Now I can make it better, like it doesn't show anything in these cells. I can, for example, show the value. In this case, I have the date table filtering a sales table and I have sales amount in that sales table. So what I can do is I can bring sales amount into the values so that actually I see when, where there's a sales. And you can, uh, you can take these totals off in case you don't want it, but it, it's up to you if you want to keep it there. That's also fine. That is where the subtotals is. You can turn off row or column subtotals. And this is the values. 
So it looks more like a calendar right now, but you can enhance it actually. You can uh, group these because there is no separation of, let's say, month or years. One row is a week, one column is a day, but it would be good to have a separation of month or year. So what you can do to enhance it is that you can bring the year as the first level of this hierarchy, and then you can bring month name as the second level of this hierarchy. So this means that you can expand to uh, different levels from year into the month. And then when you expand the month, you will see actually the calendar for that month and the value, of course, showing the sales amount of there. So it's quite a convenient way of actually analyzing your data and showing this as a calendar visual. And if you want to show them all uh, all at the same time, you can use this option to drill down, expand all down one level in the hierarchy that will go, one level will go to the month level, another one will go to that uh, bottom line level, which is the calendar view here. So quite simple, if you have another visual, uh, which has, let's say something like, something like the sales amount here, and then showing that by year and month name. And I'm just drilling down as well. Then selecting one week will impact that. You see the sales of that week. Selecting one column will be, let's say this is all Wednesdays compared across different months. Or you can select a cell which shows one particular day in the other visuals. So all other visuals will be filtered by this, it's more like a date picker as well. One more thing you can do in this and enhance it even better is to add a filter, uh, sorry, a slicer, which is this visual slicer. And that slicer can be by date. And it is a range of slicer. This helps you to reduce the size of this calendar table so that you can find something easier. You can, for example, focus on a particular date range, and this would show you only that date range, of course. Uh, or you can use these date pickers to pick that date range that you want. So pretty simple to create this. Now, in some scenarios, you prefer this to show the day number. Let's say you don't want really these values. You want this to be showing the actual day number, like 19, 20th, 21st. That is possible too. You can remove the sales amount instead you can add the day. Day is actually the day number of month. Now, when you bring that, you have to apply an aggregation because this is a cell value. Uh, aggregation on this by default is count. You can change that to sum, average, minimum, maximum. It doesn't really matter which of these four you choose because there would be one day number in each cell anyway. So it wouldn't really um, make much of a difference. I'll change it to sum. And this shows that day number. Now, the thing is that if you choose the day number, you have to make sure that in the formatting under subtotals, these row top total or column subtotals are off because then adding these values of day numbers wouldn't really make sense. So, so this would show you something really like a calendar, which you have the day numbers in here uh, and same scenario applies. You can select the day and see whatever other visuals gets filtered by that. You can customize this a little bit more and add conditional formatting. In each visual, you can go to the format tab, conditional formatting. For example, you can add a conditional formatting on background color. That changes these colors and you can go to advanced control if you want and change this a little bit different. For example, you can say from red, diverging, goes to amber and then blue and this might look like that. Or even you can take this one uh, level further using a DAX measure. Here I have a DAX measure that just check if uh, the day is even or odd, it shows two different colors. Um, and then I use that in the, in the formatting of this, which can be something like this. I'll choose field value and I choose that measure. If you want to learn more about how to use DAX 
measures in conditional formatting. I have uh, another blog article and video explaining about that. And uh, check out the link down in the description below. So when I click on OK for this, this changes. Now I have different colors. These adjustment cells, they have different colors. So it really depends on how you want to represent it. But, but the key is that this helps you to build something like a calendar visual without really needing a custom visual. There are many other ways to build that as well, but this is just one of those ways and it is quite simple to build. Uh, all of those links to study more are down in the description below. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI. Thank you.